Hello, my name is Christina and today we are going to work through lesson four, rock, paper, scissors. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to display images based on how the code cube is tilted. Before you get started, you will need the following materials. Your code cube, a USB cable, and a computer with the code cube app open. When the app is open, go ahead and tether your code cube into the computer. Using your micro USB into the code cube, it should light up. Click the connect cube in the top left corner of the app and select the code cube from the list, then click connect. The code we will create in this lesson uses the different tilt of the code cube by reading the accelerometer inside of it. Your different tilt options are left, right, forward or downward, so when it's facing you, it will go back, and then upward or backward when it is facing front. Let's start by going into the control menu and getting the on program start button, dragging that into our workspace. For this lesson, we wanna have a neutral image showing until students decide what image they are going to show in the game. To do this, go into the matrix menu and get a matrix image block. Place this block under the on program start block and set it to the smiley face image. Don't forget, you could use the create image block in place of this one and create your own image. Just make sure to monitor the memory being used if you do that. Now go back into the control menu and drag an if then block onto the workspace just under the matrix image block. We are going to create three conditions, one for each image you can play in the game. In the sensing menu, drag the cube tilting block in between the words if and then. If you select the drop down menu for this block, you can see the four tilt options described earlier. For this condition, let's select left. Now we need to tell the code cube what image to display when it is tilted to the left. Go ahead and drag another matrix image block into the workspace, placing it within the if then block just under the cube tilting block. Change the image on this block to scissors. Because the code cube will be tilted, we want the image to stay on screen long enough for the students to see what the image was. To do this, go into the control menu and drag over the pause for blank seconds block. Connect it to the bottom of the matrix image block, making sure it's still contained within the if then block. Change the number to five. Now the image of the scissors will display for five seconds when the code cube is tilted to the left. Now that we have everything we need to meet the conditions within the if then block, let's duplicate or copy and paste it two more times on the workspace, making sure that we connect it to our current line of code. Go ahead and change the cube tilting blocks to right tilt for the second instance and forward or downward tilt for the third one. You will also need to change the matrix image blocks to paper and then rock. When you have finished creating your code, click send code. When it's tethered to the computer, it should automatically show on your code cube. With your code cube in the neutral position, let's try out the different tilt positions for the conditions we created. So in neutral position, you should be showing the smiley face. When you tilt to the left, it should switch over to scissors. Now remember you have that five second pause that we put in before it should show the smiley face again. Now that we're at the smiley face, in the neutral position, we'll go to the right. Now we are showing paper. Again, we have to wait five seconds for the smiley face. And then we will go with the forward or downward tilt to show the rock. Your students might need to practice with their code cube to get used to the different tilts. You will also wanna consider if your students are working in pairs with their code cube to have them partner with another group so that they have another code cube to use when playing the game. In case you wanna use this code again, click Save Blocks at the top of the app. Then you'll want to rename it. For this one, we're going to name it Lesson Number Four. Finally, you'll want to decide on a location to save your file. Good job creating the code for Lesson Four. Let's take a quick look at the activities listed at the end of this lesson plan. Remember, these give the students additional work with the code that they just learned in this lesson. For more CodeCube resources and to see additional videos, go to pitsco.com forward slash CodeCube.